Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you a very brief wrap-up of what I read during Dewey's 24-hour reverse readathon last Saturday. And I've talked about some of these already in my 7 and 7 wrap-up, so I won't mention them again if I've already talked about them. But let's just get right into it. So the first book I finished on Saturday was French Milk by Lucy Nicely. This was a book I started on Thursday, and I meant to finish it that Friday, but um, I was very busy, and even during lunch at work, I wasn't, I didn't have time to read it, and then at night, I went out with my mom, so I didn't have time, oh man, there's a terrible, I'm trying to get, okay, anyway, uh, I went out with my mom, so I didn't have time at night to read it, so anywho, I woke up really early on Saturday morning, about 6 o'clock, and I finished this up about 7.30 a.m. And this is Lucy Nicely's um, bit more about a trip she took to Paris with her mom over Christmas break, her senior year of college, back in, I believe it was 2007. Mm, I think it is. 2007. So, yeah, I already talked about this in my reading, 7 and 7 readathon blog, so I won't mention that too much, but yeah, I really enjoyed this, and it was a nice, I read this curled up in bed before I even got out of bed for the day, so this was really nice. Sorry about that, it shows like the worst time of day to film, so let's try this again. So after I finished French Milk, I went downstairs to the courtyard of my apartment complex, and I took my coffee and my Pop-Tart, and I read Giant Days, oh man, Giant Days Volume 3, and this is a really cute graphic novel series that's been pretty popular here on BookTube. Jenny King has mentioned it, and Alan Love's Books has mentioned it, and Kayla from Book of Doodles has mentioned it. So there's a big fan group um, on BookTube of this series, and I have to count myself as one of the fans because it was a really great series. I read the first three, and it's just about three friends in college in England, and it's just a really great time. I really liked it. So after that, I took a nap, and then I did some reading in... The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace, and I didn't finish this on Saturday. I went, I continued it on Sunday, and I finished it. I read, there was four parts, so I was planning to read it one part every day for over four days, but uh, I didn't read any of it on Friday, so I read parts two and three on Saturday, and then part four on Sunday. And this is just um, a really quick poetry collection about Amanda Lovelace's experiences with child abuse and learning to love herself. And it was interesting, but unfortunately I found it a little disappointing. It felt sort of like she was just throwing all the buzzwords in there and trying to appeal to the Instagram generation, and it was just okay. I. Well, I'll probably read her other book that just came out, but it wasn't like a new favorite or anything like that. After I read parts two and three of that, I picked up a picture book. I picked up How the Library, Not the Prince, Saved Rapunzel, and this is by Wendy Medor and illustrated by Rebecca Ashdown. And I wanted to mention this one specifically because Elizabeth Tyree had said she wanted to hear about it. This is a really cute picture book about Rapunzel. She's got really long red hair, as you can see, and she's depressed. And she has all these friends that come visit her, including the prince, and none of them can get her out of her depression. But then she finds out that she got a job at the library, and so she has purpose in her life, and she starts going to the library to work. And it's more about how having a purpose in life, you know, inspires you and motivates you. And it's just a really great book. I mean, it's got a red-headed protagonist. It's talking about how libraries can change your life. She's got cats. She loves to read. It's just like all of my aesthetic all in one. And it was a really great experience reading it. And I highly recommend this. And yeah, it was just really cute and really good message. And yeah, really great book overall. And the final book I read um, on Saturday during Judy's Readathon was on Depo by Cece Bell. This was a really great book. I already read about it in my 7 and 7 wrap up, but five stars. Really great graphic novel about Cece Bell's experiences um, becoming, she lost her hearing due to an illness and became severely deaf, and she had to wear a very high powered hearing aid, and it was the 1970s, so the technology wasn't as great as it is now, and as somebody that wears hearing aids, I was just really proud of this book, and it was really great. Really recommend it. And then the latter part of 
the rant on. I went to see Ocean's 8 with my mom, and we went out for dinner. And then when I came home, uh, I had to do my steps because I hadn't walked her at all day. So yeah. Oh, and I also took an afternoon nap between reading the How the Library Saved the Rapunzel and El Duffo. So yeah, it was a really great readathon, and I always really love um, participating in doing And I wanted to touch on. Uh, I just wanted to mention my own philosophy about readathons really fast. Um, normally I don't do short-term readathons except for Dewey's. That's the only one that I regularly participate in. But even then, I never intend to read 24 hours. I am just enjoying the community and joining in on the fun. Um, I, most of the time I read about like 8 hours and like this past one I didn't read hardly at all. I probably read like 4 hours total throughout the whole day, maybe 5 hours when you consider I, it probably took me like an hour to read this but yeah it was just uh I just more like the community I also participated in seven and seven readathon and that's a short-term readathon and again I don't normally do short-term readathons and I enjoyed that but the only way I got through that was by reading short books and graphic novels and again with Dewey's I read short books and graphic novels and then I'm also doing Bakubathon and that's another short-term readathon so generally I, I participate in Dewey's, I participate in Book 2 Don, and then I also participate in March Mystery Madness and November, Nonfiction November. And that's about it. I don't usually participate in like Tone Couple or, you know, the other ones that are really popular, um, the 24 and 48 or anything like that. I don't do those. I just do those four that I mentioned and then seven and seven this year. But that was not unexpected. But I really like long-term readathons, you know, like month-long ones. But I find short-term ones kind of stressful. And to me, I read to enjoy books. I don't read, you know, it's when you do short-term readathons, it's like, you know, read a lot just to say that you read a lot and then half the time you don't remember what you've read or you have to go back and reread it later and to me that defeats of reading it in the first place you might as well just you know and savor it and let it linger over time so anywho i just wanted to mention my read on philosophy because i don't think i'd ever mentioned that before but i do enjoy long-term reading thoughts and I do enjoy the camaraderie of participating with a very popular reading thought here on book, on book two, particularly book two with God, which I never do the video challenges. And even this month, um, I my book two with God, with the TBR is going to last me throughout the month of August. I'm not quite enjoying all those books in one week. So yeah, uh, I hope everybody had a great time with duties if you participated and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!